When we came into the lobby and we saw all the amazing architecture in the center of the building, the staircase, the mural, I was blown away. I couldn't wait to start living there. I live in Bedmancourt. I've lived in Bedmancourt since October 1987. Two of the most prominent features in the, the lobby at Bedmancourt are the mural by Peter Yates and the bust of Ernest Bevan, which used to stand in, in the lobby. Uh, the bust disappeared before I moved into Bedmancourt. As I understand it, the bust was gone by mid to late 60s, I believe. And the stories that I've heard was that it was stolen because it was bronze and it was valuable. Um, the mural, on the other hand, is still there, and it's been in increasingly poor condition. The mural suffered a lot of degradation from the elements, from being exposed to coal and to rain and so forth, but also from local youths and others who congregated in the lobby and used it as a sort of a local clubhouse, and it went through a long phase of having initials etched into it and uh, people's names burnt into it with cigarette lighters, and I so began trying to get the mural restored. And thankfully, we're now in a position where it's, it's actually. I read the plaque in the lobby that says it was designed by Tecton and Bertolt Lubetkin. Went and looked him up, found out a bit about him, he was a Russian emigre and so forth. And actually, I then got interested enough that I bought John Allen's book, which is literally the book about Lubetkin. He was absolutely against buildings being presented as something that were absolutely sort of fixed and static, which might sound contradictory because that seems like exactly what buildings usually are. But if you look at any of his um, work, and certainly the post-war work, you can see that preoccupation working itself out in, for example, the treatment of the facades, the way the windows are uh, sort of placed in various patterns and so forth to, as it were, give an impression of movement across the facade. One of the interesting aspects of his situation in England was the difficulty, at least initially, in finding an appropriate match between the projects he was offered and that social vision of architecture that he believed in. The flats themselves, I think, are very considerately planned. It was also extremely practical. I mean, he gave an enormous amount of attention to the, the rational layout of kitchens and rooms and the interrelationship between those. The community in Bevin Court is, seems to be very well settled. The furthest you could ex sort of imagine from being a problem estate, you know, it seems very, very um, successful. Um, but in all of those respects, it works very well. Originally, for washing lines, when the flats first opened in 1950, they just left it as a waste ground, basically, for people to dump their old bits of furniture, shopping trolleys and dogs to... and anyone to go through whatever they wanted to do, basically. And it was left like that for years until we got this grant of the council to make the allotments, which is really nice. It really is a sense of community, from the oldest who get looked after to the youngest who I love. It really is a fantastic place, it really is. I couldn't wish for anything more. I, have, I own a dog, I'm a, I'm a dog owner, and I'm, it, we've got, we have green all the way round, right? And I can go out any time of night, I'll walk my dog, nice and quiet and peaceful serenity. Of, there's a new bus coming back. Uh, it's uh, been modelled on the old bus, they found an old, anyway, it's been modelled and it looks, it looks very nice, it looks quite tactile. And I can't wait till that's installed. I love living in Bevercourt. 